Now for your listening pleasure, here's Polizzi and Rose, covering the week of media, marketing, and digital content news. This old marketing. Take it away, boys. Well, hello, my friends. This is Robert Rose, and welcome to episode number 386 of This Old Marketing for Friday, July 28th, 2023. And with me, as he always is, as he always is, my pal, my colleague, and a guy who hasn't earned quite as much as Barbenheimer did this weekend, Mr. Joe Polizzi. <laughs> did you see Did you see him? Did you I see either not, of them? I have not seen either, but I am... Very, very impressed with the uh, with the box office this weekend. Uh, yeah, like <clears throat> I'm just looking at Barbie, 155 yeah. million domestic, 182 international. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, one weekend. Yeah, yeah one it, weekend. It's, it's and then incredible. you combine that with uh, with Oppenheimer. It's the I think they said it was the fourth best weekend in history. Only and and interestingly, uh, what it was one of the other stats that I saw that was fascinating was it's only behind uh, Avengers Endgame, Avengers, I believe Ultron, no, the other one of the other Avengers movies, uh, and Star Wars. One of the last Star Wars was the was the big one, and so all those are sequels, right? So this is an, these are original movies. Although, interestingly, people don't know there's forty Barbie movies. There, there have been forty plus Barbie. I didn't movies know over, that over the last twenty years. Yeah, there's a whole, there's literally what they call the Barbie, uh, <clears throat> the Barbie universe. Yeah, you have the, you have the like very much like the Marvel universe or the DC universe. You have the Barbie universe, really? which is yeah. There's a whole thing about it. Yeah, it's it's fascinating. Is there an Italian Barbie? There is, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, I'm is there sure. A Sicilian Barbie. That's the question. That's the most <laughs> that's important a, a one. Sicilian I'm gonna Barbie. Look. It's a little bit shorter, but <laughs> and the, a little bit shorter, and the hands move like. Take this. Ken. Leave the cannoli. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've already started on the wrong foot with that. Yeah. One. I know. Actually, I did, I did some research on this because I was infatuated by it. Um, Barbie is a a one billion dollar brand annually by yeah. itself. Already, oh, it's, this it's little this movie here th- yeah. could be reaching up to that point when it gets uh, when you're, when it's, it'll be definitely north of five hundred. I mean, it's almost hundred percent. Yeah, they've they've they Lego movie the heck out of this. You know what I mean? I mean, they have more than yeah, more than that. I'm just interested to see. Just, I mean, so this came out, and since the build up to this, it says this. I uh, got the stock price here is up nineteen percent, which added a. Di- um, $2 billion in additional market cap to Mattel's stock price. Yeah. So all really, really good things. But again, this is getting amazing reviews. I think it's 91% Rotten Tomatoes or something like that. It's, it's yeah. Just, Apparently people, well, <laughs> people love it or people are freaked out by it. I mean, <laughs> which is very funny. Have you seen why, that? Why one of freak, the, no, I don't know why, <clears throat> why freaked out. One of the brilliant, well, because apparently... It, you know, it, it speaks to, uh, I, I have not seen it. <clears throat> so what I'm going on here is all hearsay. So Great. I love it when we comment on things. That exactly. No yeah, we have no idea. Doing. Okay, great. But, let's, yeah, let's comment perfect. on the movie. Yeah. So let's dive right in. Um, <laughs> yeah. One of the things that I've heard is that it makes fun of, you know, it makes fun of masculinity. It makes fun of feminism. It makes fun of, it sort of pokes fun at all of that, right? It pokes okay. fun a little bit of, of wokeness. And... If you and again, apparently, if you sort of take it the wrong way, it there are a lot of apparently men or uh, sort of let's call them, you know, let's call them the Matt Gateses of the world, right? Who you know uh, went on social media to t- to talk about how woke he thought the movie was and how awful it was. Um, there are a lot of, and it's a brilliant marketing move. What they did was they took all of the one star reviews, which are clearly from men, um, and made them into ads. So, you know, like one says, you know, this movie will kill us all. You know, this, you know, this, this, this oh is a, per- this movie is perverse. You know, it's like all these great one star reviews and they used it to create ads for the movies on social media. It's, it's just brilliant. It's just so perfect. So, yeah, I, I, 
from what I understand, it's 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 sort of just really funny and really you know really witty, um, and not what you expect. That what I've continually hear is like it's not what you think it's going to be. So I'm really curious to see it. The we have Sirius XM in the car, and um, I was listening to Channel Two, which is their hits channel, and they were doing like a Barbie album marathon. And Ryan That's Gosling yeah. was singing one of the songs. It's uh, it's Push, which was a match. I think a Matchbox Twenty sure. song. Yeah, yeah. And Ryan Gosling. I don't know if he's doing this in the movie, but he's singing it just like they do, <laughs> like real deep and guttery. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, this is crazy. <laughs> like I, I don't know if that's how Ryan Gosling sings or if he was just doing. You know, an impersonation of a Matchbox Twenty song, which I he, hopefully correct me if I'm wrong. He apparently steals the movie, so uh, oh, you know, which well, wouldn't surprise me. He's so funny. He's so funny and witty, All right? Yeah. So, but you know, what what are you what are you gonna do? Yeah. Anyways, so what else is going on? Well, uh, you know, uh, let's see. Uh, you're traveling. Uh, well, you're tra- I'm you're traveling. Yeah, I'm traveling going, this yeah. week. I'm going to I'm going to to the lovely. I haven't been to, to Toronto since pre Pandy, um, so. Uh, I'm off to Toronto for the first time in five years, um, so I'm very excited to see my friends north of the border um, and do a little client work up there. Uh, we're ha- we have a we have a few meetings that we're doing up there, which will be fun. And and you're you're staying local, but you are traveling. You know, is it? Sort yeah. Of, and while while yeah. this is is uh, being recorded, I'll, I'm at Macon, the Marketing AI Intelligence. That's right. Conference. That's right. Paul's event. Yeah. And Paul's event. So I'm I'm sure. I'm learning a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm meeting a lot of very, there's a lot of people we know that are going to be there. So I'm very excited to see some of our, our friends. Uh, yeah. But, but last week as as most people know, you know, I did, we did the whole North Carolina tour and ended up, we did not see Ryan Reynolds at the Wrexham Chelsea. You did not to get to touch the cocoon egg. Yeah, in okay. Chapel Hill. I really, <clears throat> uh, there was a stand up Ryan Reynolds, uh cardboard piece that, uh, I think my <laughs> wife might have taken home with her. <laughs> Nobody can find it anywhere. But That's we perfect. did not. There were there was no flesh and blood Ryan Reynolds, which was sad. He wasn't there or you just didn't see him. There were people talking that he might have been there, but I thought that if he was there, he would have like, come. Like he would, Sasquatch. He would come out. Yeah, he, 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 yeah he, there would have been a sighting uh, <laughs> yeah. somewhere. I didn't see it. And our R and our R side. I really wanted to. T- yeah, I really wanted to not perversely touch him and see <laughs> if I could bring in some of that Ryan Reynolds. I, magic. I you you talked about it really a long time last week. Yeah, it, it just <laughs> it was. Uh, oh, we had a correction on the last one. Uh, oh, Laura on our team said that we uh, Donnie uh, Wahlberg was in. Not in what did we say? He was in Backstreet Boys, which he's not. He's in In Sync, right? Where's we got to we got to get this right I don't now. Know. I don't know. I I don't know. Okay. This is well, my we got to look it up. My, this is we have yeah. to do a correction because that was my entire was, point. What? That my entire point was that I had no idea of any of these bands. <laughs> but you were the one that brought up ninety eight degrees. No, right? you brought it? up ninety eight degrees. <laughs> You were the one who oh, said it was my favorite band, okay. and I said I don't even know see, if I can name a song. Okay, see, we okay, we got to get this whole thing straight. All right, uh, Donnie Wahlberg was a founding member of New Kids on the Block. Okay, so there oh, okay, go. there you so go. So we were way off, like we were off with all of the boy band stuff. I see. I mean, I guess I was because since I brought it up, because we were right. talking about well, insane, okay, <clears throat> and since we're correcting boys. the record here, the name, the guy that I couldn't think of his name. Remember, I said he was the husband of the the woman. <laughs> was Nick Lachey, so I oh, was trying yeah. to think of Nick Lachey. Yes, from ninety eight degrees, right? I I don't know. <laughs> I don't. These are the things that I don't know. <laughs> Laura, we're we're gonna apologize right now to you. So if yeah. you would correct whatever just happened in the last two minutes, we'll use that for the next episode. Okay. We need to do. I think we need somebody new on our this old marketing team. We need to do like right after like the post. Like what's his name does with the, the post zombie <laughs> like, shows? Sure. They have they show The Walking Dead, and then there's the Walking Dead show about The Walking Dead that you just saw. Yeah, we need to do this old marketing show correcting everything that we just said. 
That's right. It's which sort would of be like twice the, as long. Yeah, the response address, kind of like the Democrats or the Republicans do when the other one does a State of the Union. There's a response address. There needs to be a, a response address. If anybody address. wants that job, it pays nothing, <laughs> but there's glory. That's there's, right. Yeah. We could stick you fame, right into our podcast feed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just what? What's that line from The Replacements? Uh, uh, Chicks dig scars, glory lasts forever. That's, yeah, that's the role. Yeah, something. So, something and I, I didn't mean that yeah that was I, not a negative comment that no, was I know. directly it's, from yeah. the movie yeah because <laughs> yeah i mean, I mean you got to watch yourself it's not like we're, we're jason aldean <clears throat> or anything like we've got to really be careful with what we say oh well i mean i've told you my 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 dot-com story about when i first joined the 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 uh the the consulting firm very small tiny it was three people at the time when i joined and the first thing they, they hired me is to, to run their marketing. This is 1998, I believe, 1997. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and the front page of their website was, so it had lots of bevels. Remember how bevels were really in in 1997. <laughs> bevels and sort of that aluminum sort of look of websites. That's what it said. And the front page was a quote from Conan the Barbarian, the one where he says, you know, I don't even, I'll get the quote wrong, but it's something to the effect of, you know, we will conquer, you have to read it in Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? So it's, we will conquer and hear the lamenting of the women. That was the front page of their website. I said, that's got to go. That, 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 <laughs> it's like, it's like, I am expert web person, 1997. Yeah. And I'm I, pretty sure that needs I'm to, not, you know, I'm go. not a marketing genius, but I know that has to go. <laughs> uh, I don't want to comment. I know you and I were talking a little bit about the whole Jason Aldean thing, the the song that I don't know if we want to hit yeah. any of that. The only thing I wanted to talk about with that, because I did a little bit of research just in case sure. we talked about the song that's going like a very controversial song that he released. Yeah, it was doing almost nothing like there was nothing going on until CMT pulled the video. Like there was yeah. nobody saying anything. And then I saw so my my little theory conspiracy theory if you will is that somebody on jason aldean's team said, said pull it yeah said, said pull, it. pull it yeah pull it and whatever and i know you'll take some backlash but it's going to be big for all of us and then now yeah because he released the song in may didn't do anything pulls the video off of cmt it goes to number two on the billboard charts right after that yeah marketing I, yeah uh, yeah it's marketing it, yeah i've yeah you don't agree with this? No, no, no. I a hundred percent. I could see that. I'm, 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 my little conspiracy hat is is right on with yours. I could yeah. absolutely see that. I just think it's a shitty song. I, it's so I, I, yeah. It's it's hard for me to it's hard for me to even give it oxygen. Well, I mean, you could talk about his political views all day long, but don't go ripping on Jason Aldean's musicality. Oh, I, <laughs> I'm going to have to do that, my friend. I'm going to have to do that, my friend. Well, you There's, have a lot. You, I mean, you grew up in. I mean, I've got country friends. music is. I love country music. I, yeah. Country music has been a passion of mine since you're I grew not, up in not, you Texas. Don't like, you don't like his music. I huh? no, hmm. he, no, I do not like Jason Aldean's music. No, he I really don't like that whole formula, style though. of. The formula of getting a number one hit he really has that oh you've really seen have you, have you've seen the bo burnham sort of uh bit that no, he I does love bo about burnham. i haven't yeah. seen the, he does a bo whole burnham. he has a whole song you know uh about country music pop what he calls pop country music and how it's it's changed the country music it's perfect so i i encourage everybody to go look up the bo burnham country music song it's 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 fantastic the thing that i love about that's bo perfectly burnham, a perfect thing of for jason ld you ever remember when i'm sure you we talked about it on the show when he did inside a bo burnham special yeah. oh yeah amazing when he said that he wanted to save the world with comedy and he goes through the whole thing he's like if your house is on fire and you're in trouble he's like call me and i'll tell you a joke it's like yeah. he goes yeah. through the whole thing, like yeah, all the exactly. things that could horribly happen to you. Don't worry, I will help you. Call me, I'll tell you a joke. So yeah. I his that, that is internet funny. song is, I mean, it's uh, so genius. I mean, it's uh, he's he's it's, too it's he's annoyingly too smart. clever. He's, yeah, it's he's too smart. So. Yeah. Anyways, I know we we talked. We we went over our allotted time in in news. We do, coverage. and we have a but we have a show on. to do. Yeah, we have we a do? wonderful show. Yeah. What we do have, we got? What's we on? We have a great show. Well. 
breaking news, uh, literally as we record this, it won't be so breaking now when, when this comes live on Friday, but um, it, it is uh, breaking news right at the moment. So X marks the spot. Uh, Twitter is now X. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about how the rebrand actually happened, what it might mean, and whether or not they'll actually start to get sued with the number of uh, trademark infringements that they seem to have violated. But uh, we'll talk a little bit about that, of course. We'll actually question of whether Threads, uh, we started this conversation last week, whether yep. Threads is already unraveling. See what I did there? See, see what that's I did? That's very nice. Yeah, that's, that's mm -hmm. very cute. Um, a couple of articles that have come out recently to talk about how Threads may or may not survive the test of time, and we'll start to uh, have a little conversation over that. Then we'll talk a little bit about OpenAI, um, and uh, by by way of that, mention Google, um, because both OpenAI have struck local deals with uh, for local news to create local news and are doing experiments on that uh, thing. And, and then also, the news is contemplating suing OpenAI, right? They're for scraping and, and uh, getting and using the learning model. The to whole news? Their content. All, all the news? A, a consortium, apparently. A, big, a whole, yeah. all of the news. Plenty of hashtag news. Hashtag all yeah. the news that fits. So not the print. news, like the news isn't doing it, but the, the new, news no, as a news. No, the actual news companies. that is correct. Because I was like, did, did, did the news. Thank you for sentient? that very pedantic correction. Yes, but I, <laughs> hey, I really that's appreciate that's the first that. place I go. Yes. You yeah. know this. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and then and we'll we get to some Q&A, right? Yeah, we got some great Q&A. Uh, Which we, we two questions to get to both this time. That's right. We promised to get to both of them this week. Uh, we have one uh, one audio question, and then, of course, uh, who phoned in, and then and then another of someone who wrote in to us and asked us a question. So love both of those, and so want to spend a little time on that. Then we'll get finally to our rants and raves, where Joe will talk a little bit about Macon, the uh, like he where he'll be this week, uh, and some of the success that they've had, and I. We'll talk a little bit about CMS software. I know that sounds boring, but uh, trust me, I, it's, there, there's some interesting Ooh, things about what's going another, on in media. Another yeah. commentary <laughs> that we'll never forget. That's right. Let's talk about CMS, it's like, CMS oh, hey, software. I, and I was like, hey, I've got this great yeah. idea to start this whole content platform. Yeah. It's going to be very exciting. What's it on? I'm going to talk about content management yeah. systems. Yeah. I'm going to talk about WordPress. <laughs> don't don't bet the farm on that one. Yeah, so, no, that'll be that's exciting. that one's going to light the light that. the world on fire. <laughs> All right. Okay. So shall we start with X? We shall indeed. Uh, we're going to link to two stories here in our show notes. With one from The Verge and the other from Media Post. <clears throat> this is coming out literally as uh, as early as yesterday when it all went down. And the headline from The Verge is that Twitter is being rebranded as X after Elon tweeted about it all night. The bird site is shedding its feathers. Boy, the puns have been oh, replete, you know, flipping the bird, uh, X marks the spot, uh, all that stuff, you know. So X.com now redirects to Twitter.com following a tweet from Twitter owner Elon Musk today, and that meant uh, yesterday, which was uh, uh, Monday. An interim X logo will soon replace the Twitter bird logo, which it already has. Uh, around midnight last night, uh, Elon started tweeting and did so for hours about the Twitter rebrand to X, the one-letter name he's used repeatedly in company and product names forever. It started with a tweet saying, soon we shall bid adieu to the Twitter brand and gradually all the birds. So, gosh, he <laughs> Pass the bong, Elon. Okay. Anyway, so he get that article goes on to then talk about a little bit uh, all how he sent email to the employees, basically talking about how the company would become X, meaning that none of the employees knew this was going to happen. So I'm sure they were really happy to wake up on Monday morning and see the that marketing team loves yeah. the, loves oh. surprises. I, is there That's a marketing the best team thing. Anymore? when you're doing a whole rebrand? No, there's yeah. there's no communication team for sure. We know yeah. at Twitter. Yeah, that's right. I'm yeah. sure there's somebody working on in marketing. And there's yeah. at least gotta be salespeople. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Linda Yaccarino, she got to, to to tweet out X is here, let's do this. Um and then if you just click on over to the media post uh, article which is yeah. that now oh. in the past tense, Twitter rebrands to X and begins transformation to the everything app. Twitter has officially rebranded to X as media post. Uh, the change follows a chain of Musk companies that incorporate the letter X. Really? Does it? I, I, well, it's it, space it, X. Oh, X. okay. X.com. 
All right. Didn't he have uh, X.com? Well, that is. That's Twitter. I mean, I, I'm th- other than SpaceX, I'm trying to anyway. No, he started X. X was the was the original name for PayPal. I I, I remember that. I do remember, remember that. Anyway. So. The thinking is in the same vein, says Media Post, as the poet E.E. E. Cummings, an American poet who wrote his poems in all lowercase letters. Cummings' use of all lowercase letters was intended to convey a sense of rebellion against conventional rules of language and syntax, and some writer on Media Post is really proud of themselves for that little uh, <laughs> gem. Um, but yeah, it seems kind of weird. Uh, the website Twitter.com remains active, of course. Branding on the app version of the platform did not appear to change. I haven't checked my app uh, recently to see the if app. It is the app in. is still the bird. The, okay, this the app is, is still a, the bird as of yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. To, the yeah. app is still the bird, but online you're you're looking at an X on the top. That's right. That's exactly right. Which, so which anyway, that article goes on to by some a user who yeah. who said to Elon that you can use my X. <laughs> well, and that <laughs> brings up a great point, which is something we can also talk about, and then I want to totally get your take on this whole brand thing, um, which is. Apparently, Microsoft, Meta, and 90 others um, uh, have trademarks on the X. Uh, So, I mean, you know, suing Elon in five, four, three, two, right? So um, what do you think? First of all, what do you think about the brand? And then what do you think about its, you know, the, the, the the, the ability for it to have any longevity? Well, I feel that Elon was very disappointed in the news coverage over the past couple of weeks. <laughs> you think? <laughs> that it really sort of went over to the thread side and said, we've got to do something and might as well. You know, of course, this is not new news. He's been talking about course, doing yeah. X, the everything app, you know, the entire time. So I saw, I think, somewhere that a tweet is not a tweet anymore. It's, what is it? It's a zeet. Uh, oh it's my a, gosh! It's a X E E T. I'm I'm yeah, and, with and, you. Then yeah. this is breaking news, and yeah. it, and Linda Yaccarino is changing her name to Linda Jacarino <laughs> with an X, <laughs> which I like Jacarino a lot better. Do I mean, you? it just flows off the tongue. Uh, yes. And every yeah, basically, if you change your name, if you're a Twitter employee and well now X employee, and you change your name to something with an X, you get a bonus. Gotcha. Uh, which which. I'm excited about and mine. I and mean, if I was working there, I would be Polixi. <laughs> I would change both the Z's to X's and we would go from there. Uh, I'm honestly, I know the headline for this episode is going to be something around X because this is what we're talking about, but I'm sure. tired. I'm tired of talking about Elon just making these knee jerk reactions to things. And yeah, trying to figure out what Twitter needs to be when Twitter just should be Twitter and build on the community that they've had for the last dozen plus years. Yeah. I, yeah. I, and I think that's what everyone wants. Um, and my other take is I know we're going to talk about threads and I think it moves right into threads. The opportunity that X has, I don't even want to call it X, but the opportunity that they have is they're willing to do the things that the other social platforms aren't. Elon has made that very clear. Elon will talk about all the things and let everyone, anyone talk about whatever they want. And uh, Masari and Zuckerberg don't want to have that happen on threads. And which is maybe one of the reasons why threads needs to find its footing because X Twitter is very much of the moment. They're very much about news very much about politics and you're not seeing that at least for right now. I don't know if you ever will on threads. So he'll have an, he'll have this competitive advantage because he literally is willing. I, it's funny. I was listening to, you know, our, our friends, um, Steve Davis mm-hmm. was talking about the podcast. Uh, Mr. Beast manager was on my first million podcast and I was oh, listening okay. to yeah, it. Sure. Yeah. And I was thinking about this because Twitch banned gambling on its site and the opportunist in that whole thing was kick kick which is underwritten subsidized owned i think by stake the online gambling company um Hmm. kick can survive and do really really well because they're willing to do the thing that twitch is not willing to do talk about gambling content 24 7 right because it obviously helps their business and i thought the same thing is true 
of what Elon wants to do. Elon will go down to the depths and talk about whatever issues are the most divisive. And as you pointed out many times, it, when when there's that tension, there's people. Well, it's and, true. And they'll he'll, and and I don't know how to monetize that necessarily. And of course, that's why they've lost a lot of advertisers because it's not quote unquote brand safe. But you will have people flock to X because of that. And whatever X becomes doesn't really matter. It's still going to be the place where you want to talk about things in the moment. It's going to be Twitter and threads right now is not that place. Yeah. Well, and, it's, and this is a nice segue to, to, to the thread story, which we can talk about, because honestly, the the so so my take as a as a marketing and brand guy is that this will at some point become a case study because this is just you know this is exactly the wrong way to do it um and you know not to even talk about how fumble you know fumbled the actual design of the x really is i mean it you know it looks like it can you know like 1990 called and it wants its logo back right um and you know it's 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 not good um Black is almost certainly not the right color. A black, a black X is not going to be the right. You know, I mean, it's just. I it, think it, it just sends a positive message. Yeah, right. Exactly. Right. And so, it, there are so many things wrong with it from a brand design standpoint that it's not even worth really talking about. But more than that, it is the timing of things because what you want with any sort of big rant, brand relaunch is something in the barrel that actually changes the experience or changes the promise uh, that the brand is going to uh, convey. And so if you believe that Twitter right now is a damaged brand, well, what you then have done is you've brought all that damage to the new brand. And if you believe that Twitter is a beloved safe brand, you haven't brought any of that over to the X because you're saying, I'm switching it, I'm changing it. And it's like, it's it's the the... With because you didn't change anything about the experience or change anything about the business model or have anything in your barrel ready to fire that that says this is ready to go, we have a payments thing or we have a new application or we're changing our business model or you know all of the, with nothing else besides we're slapping a new coat of paint and a new mark on it. You haven't changed anything really. You've just confused people, and to the to the extent that we're now. <laughs> We're calling it z zeting. Zeke. I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm gonna zeet. It's just I'm, I it, want my yeah, yeah. It's like a yeah. muffin. It's I'd it's, like a it's muffin. just not good. Um, so that does bring us to threads. Um, and you know, so we'll link to a couple of uh, a different well, hey, before before you yeah, go, yeah. we'll, we'll yeah, go yeah. up here before I want to sure. say. But I'll play devil's advocate with you. I okay. think this is very oh, wow. much on brand. This is, I mean, if well, it's on brand Twitter, for Elon. Yeah, yeah so I'm I mean, saying, but the new Twitter, if if the if it's almost like uh, the house is on fire, I want to go watch it burn. Right? This is, yeah, that, that's the current brand. This is very much in line with everything else that Elon has done. And by the way, in his career, like, you know, when did he? He said, how long ago was it ago? He showed the picture and showed the image of this is what the cyber truck is going to look like. Well, they're releasing it now. Yeah. It's taken a decade, but he's doing it. So he's yeah. done this, like, I'm going to go to the moon thing quite a few times in a different way. But he's done this, so maybe it's on brand, and we should say he's just this brilliant strategic thinker. Oh, I, I'm, that is I'm way not sure ahead about of that. us. Yeah. yeah. I don't believe that, but <laughs> yeah. I, I think a, we should. A broken clock I, is right twice a day, right? You know, well, I get a, a couple people that email me on occasion because I'm almost always negative Elon. And, and I've been I've been um, accused of not seeing J'accuse? anything, <laughs> anything positive about Elon because I don't like him as a person necessarily. But not that I know him very well. He just doesn't call me back. Um, so anyways, I don't know. We can uh, talk about threads. We, now. I just, yeah, well, I, I'll, I'll say this. So which is he's built amazing companies right he's built i mean spacex is an amazing company and tesla is an amazing company yep. and so he i think what is so disappointing is the opportunity that he had to become uh someone who really is considered thoughtful innovative creative 
and that and and to you know there's a there's a funny thing we we often talk in marketing about authenticity right how we need to be a more authentic or brands should be authentic to themselves and as thought leaders or as influencers we have to be authentic and authentic 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 and what we tend to do is we conflate authenticity with good right we we can we conflate with being nice or with being uh really net net positive in the world and all authentic means is basically of undisputed origin so you can be an authentic asshole you. Yeah, yeah, you can be, you know, deal. so what we may be seeing is the authentic Elon. So I'll say this, Elon is being very authentic to himself with this rebrand. That's, so. that's what, that's what I think. So, yeah. So kudos to, <laughs> to All right. Elon and then now to <laughs> Zeet. Zeet Light. Zeet Light. The threads. Yes, there we go. Well, again, a link to two uh, stories here in the uh, in, in our wonderful show notes here. The first from marketingbrew.com, uh, which uh, opens up by saying Threads contends users with retention. Uh, well, excuse me. Thread contends with user retention and complaints week after debut. Uh, the app's daily active user count is more than halved since the beginning of July per one analysis. Uh, the article opens up by saying, this month, Pizza Hut referenced a NSFW, not safe for work meme on threads. It was subsequently deleted by the chain, one of many brands trying to figure out threads, Meta's new Twitter competitor that came out on July 5th. Brands have flocked to the platform in droves looking to capture eyeballs on the new platform. However, Threads has experienced a sizable drop in traffic since its debut. We covered this uh, last week. Sure. Uh, that's so last week, says the marketing brew. Threads <laughs> clocked 100 million users in its first week, uh, according to an analysis firm SimilarWeb. The app saw 49 million daily active users on July 1st, just days after it rolled out. Uh, see, I think that analysis is not good. Because would you call signups an active user? I mean, no, you can't. That's why we don't know if they were yeah. using the wrong the wrong base. Probably I, what they have right now with what is it? The twenty three million daily actives one week yeah. later. Is yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Is that what we're looking at? Probably yeah, a more realistic like number. Yeah. And you don't even know what a user is at this point because it hasn't That's been right. long enough. That's right. That people because all you had to do was say yes. A lot of people said yes. Yeah put up one thread to say hi and you know with a question mark sure. literally and that's kind of it anyway the second article that we will link to here comes to us from platformer.news uh, and it is basically uh, the headline here reads five reasons thread could still go the distance engagement oh, is down a week distance. later they say but the prize is still there going the distance that's why every time i read this headline that's what i was thinking of oh, um, yeah uh meta release threads into the world <laughs> its arrival came months after anticipation uh anticipation um and ultimately a bit earlier than meta had planned elon musk's characteristically self-defeating move to limit free users viewing a small number of tweets each day had given meta an unusually opportune moment to strike and it seized the moment the outside success that follows threads was the fastest app to hit 100 million downloads and later blew past 150 million came as a surprise to almost everyone involved that includes the apps makers at meta who had built a homegrown hit this big since facebook itself uh, the article, this article goes on to basically talk about some of the other ways that it has uh, launched and some of the, I guess, counter arguments to uh, what New York Times has said, well, it might be the next Google Plus um, because Google Plus had 100 million users. And, and basically, the article goes on to make eh, three or five really interesting arguments, I would suspect on how Instagram and Meta can make threads uh, a success. So which is it yeah. at this point? I mean, is it, I mean, I think it's probably still too early to tell, but do you have a gut feel one way or the other? Is threads gonna become a thing or like all my, all my non-social media marketing people, like my friends who aren't in our business at all, find are, are kind of off threads already. They're like, it's boring. There's nobody talking about anything. And so that's it's fascinating a data point for me. Yeah, I think that, uh, and we saw that early when I signed up and you immediately started to seeing some, some older posts and yeah, it wasn't of the moment as we just talked about. I think they missed an opportunity there. Not that, that that's gone by the wayside. There's still plenty of opportunities, especially with the fact that the, the threads Instagram integration is frankly brilliant. 
I mean, they will continue to feed new people onto threads. So just because you lost some from the beginning, people might come back. But I, I don't know exactly what threads is supposed to be if we're not talking about the right. news of the moment. Other than not Twitter, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the yeah. the okay, so I before this uh, episode, I went on to threads to see what everybody's talking about. And you know what everybody's talking about? They're threads. talking about X. Oh, they're talking about X. Okay. They're yeah, talking about sure. X. They're talking about Twitter. Well, I was so, gonna say that might be that that might be the thing, right? That might be the 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 actual uh, the rebranding might be a stimulus, right? It might be it's it so this is another reason that it's not a good idea for him to have made news, quite honestly, because it's yet another reason to go talk about something on threads. But you could talk about that on as long as they're not blocking you on X, they could you go talk about it on there as well. Go Z I, on it. it. Yeah. But but it's no uh, you know secret that Zuckerberg wanted to totally duplicate Twitter. So now that Twitter's name is available, why don't they just become Twitter? Like, go get it. <laughs> like, he well, Musk that's doesn't a want fast, it. Well, that's a fact. So just become, just say, oh, hey, good, you're going to be X. You keep doing your thing, Elon. That is a we'll, fascinating we'll, idea. We'll, we'll give you a billion dollars. I know you want some money against this. We'll give you a billion dollars. We want For the name the of the domain. And we want the domain. And we will take on Twitter that, with our new Threads Light. That, that. Some days you have genius ideas, and that, <laughs> that my friend, is a genius. I, I hadn't even genius. thought about that. I hadn't even thought about that, but that is brilliant. You just go to Twitter, and you say, listen, we'll take the domain, the bird. We'll take it yeah. all off your hands, my friend. We'll take all of it. And they've got plenty it. of cash. They've got $100 plus billion right. dollars and, and we won't And we won't even sue you for the X trademark. In fact, we'll just swap them. We'll just That's swap. Right. We'll just swap trademarks. That's totally that, Microsoft, that's what Microsoft should do, but they don't have anything like lying in the wings. Yeah, Threads is already there, and say done. It's so like Elon, you go do, and actually, you could get a lot more money for it, and because I think Elon wants out. I think Elon wants to do the everything app and doesn't necessarily want to be in the the Twitter space itself or what Twitter was. So great, that, do the switcheroo. I'm call I, it a day. I, I think that's a drop the mic moment because I think that is that is perfect. That that would be, <laughs> that's just so good. That's so good. Yeah, well, we'll we'll see if that ever happens. That would be the smartest move. I um, don't disagree with that at all. I think that is that is that is a fantastic move. But again, I there, I think that we are in agreement that this is so early that we don't know what Threads is. But yeah. what I don't know is what is it to become. I don't know. It's is it the is it the community marketplace talking about what's going on at the moment? Because that's certainly not it. Um, and it doesn't it doesn't seem like they want to go that direction because they're saying they really don't want to have news and politics on the platform. Yep. But if you're politically agnostic and you're news agnostic, I don't see how threads can be in the moment because that's. 75 percent of the conversation you're talking about what's going on politically you're talking about what's going on in the world in news and you're talking about barbenheimer yeah that's 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 what the platform should be talking about where that's you can right. get some thought leader and you get some no-name folks that follow them making some smart comments and you get a conversation going i don't yeah. know what do I mean? yeah no it's 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 yeah it's one of those things where <laughs> It, I mean, you know, this idea can't happen, obviously, right? Because of the the egos involved here, and you know, the, what would actually happen, and and I don't think that you know, Meta wants the the Twitter brand that per se, because I, to think, your he, early... I think he does. Well, think he we'll does. we we'll see, we'll we'll see. I think I think it may now be spoiled enough where it's sort of like, yeah, but if Threads, you know. It, it, Pulling in Twitter now, it's it's it, it may be spoiled bread, right? You know what I mean? It's like it's just it's a little it's a little bit old and dated at this point. Uh, but I but I'm but I'm still I love the idea. I still love the idea. Five billion, put it yeah. out there. Yeah, it's Take it's it. an it's an easy thing that they could do, um, and <laughs> I mean literally over uh, a beer they could figure all this out. Um, it would, yeah, it would be fun. Now that would be something we could talk about on threats. Finally, finally, yes. Well, we would be talking about it on 
th- thread Twitter thre- thread no. yeah no. Twitter threads you know I want to get a I want to get a jersey I want to get an Arsenal jersey and I want to have Jacarino on the back of it <laughs> only Arsenal <laughs> fans would would get that reference but yeah so yeah there you go right. we'll see there you we'll have see it. what happens there you have it all right let's um we're gonna so let's move on because we want to get to the questions this week we don't want to be sort of jimmy kimmel and make all of these wonderful questioners like you know matt damon and never have room for them so <laughs> we're gonna skip the open ai see that now that's an inside baseball reference if you if you watch jimmy kimmel and matt damon you know what i'm talking about mm-hmm. um anyway let's get to our questions because our q a oh, is okay. fantastic and we have two of them uh, this week to to uh, talk about both of them fantastic questions. Um, let's do the written one first, and it comes okay. to us courtesy of Linda Ray. Hi, Linda. Thank you Hi, very Linda. much for listening. A fantastic question. And Linda says, "I'm embarking on how to be better manage content assets with how to strategize content, how to organize content, diversifying across all the different channels, and all the she names all the channels there. Um, basically, she's saying it's too much." And I know Know Your Customer is vital because developing personas is essential, but things change. We're starting over. Planning ahead seems super logical and practical, but sometimes real-time creativity sparks an idea, uh, an answer. So how does one start, restart all you're, you're doing with baby steps on what content goes where? In other words, how do you sort of reboot your content platform across all these channels if the story changes is what I'm taking her question to mean. Did I get that right, do you think? Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, I mean, my quick gut is, Linda, thank you for the question. And second, this is something that Robert and I know firsthand Ooh, because boy, we go into every organization yeah. and that's the thing that they're dealing with. You go in and the average company is just creating a distributing content 10 to 13 different ways and they're yep. not making an impact at all they're not they're they're not driving any of the kpis and they're not building an audience and maybe it's just a simple you know you don't have to go out and spend a lot of money do it do a, a cursory audit of here's all the things that we're doing and just say okay what are the things that we're really really doing well that are really making an impact that if we continue to execute on we'll continue to drive positive things for the organization or for the individual creator. Great. We're going to keep those. Then what are the, what's the stuff that's just, ah, we don't know. So you have to put that yep. in a pile like, and make some decisions about it. And then you say, oh yeah, this one's just a big waste of time. You probably already have some of those. So if you just do that, you can knock off seven and eight and say, good, we're just done with that. We're going to kill it. Like, let's say that you have a threads account you say, oh, I'm just going to keep the threads account up, but I'm not going to post. I'm done with that or LinkedIn or whatever the case is. Right. But I think at the end of the day, I don't know if you agree with this, Robert, but I think you have to say, look, we we have to pick one of these things to excel at. We have to figure out who our audience is. We have to figure out what our content tilt is, what that differentiation area is over all the other content clutter out there, and then go full 100% into we're going to have the best newsletter. We're going to have the best podcast. We're going to have the best YouTube series. It's always the thing. And that's where a lot of content creators they get into trouble because they want to do all the things and you can't do that. You always have to come back to the one thing and diversify later. And Linda, it sounds like we might've diversified too soon instead of getting to the point where what's the thing we do best and focus on that first. I don't know if you have a take on that, Robert. I I do. I mean, and I agree uh, to a point um, which is, you know, one of the things that we often say um, is to get good at that one thing, right? To get good at the, you know, focus in, focus on the one channel. Yeah. And, and and in many ways, it's great advice that is impractical in reality because we do need to be on a lot of channels. The, the key, I think, is the focus and attention. You obviously can't put the same level of focus and attention, nor should you put the same focus and attention to all the channels. So you actually ha- do need to be discerning about which channels you're actually going to use, right? And which channels will come off of that list if you decide to go on a new one. For example, I am uh, considering and, and seriously considering and and not seriously considering, I'm, I've made the decision that I'm going to get onto TikTok and I'm going to start doing TikTok. That's going to come at the expense of something else. 
And yeah. I haven't quite made that decision yet, but it will come at the expense of my efforts. This, it's going to come at the expense of this podcast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like, yeah, I'm but, done with this yeah. whole marketing. Exactly. I'm going on TikTok, yeah. folks. Yeah. But, um, but, 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 but so that's one thing. The second thing is, is that you, 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 in order to make that decision, I think you have to have, and this is what we see when we go in and talk with clients <clears throat> about this. The biggest missing thing is, why are you on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Threads, Twitter, Google, whatever it is, right? Why are you on there? And, and usually there's no good business objective to it. In other words, there's, we haven't really formulated a formal goal or objective about what it is we're trying to do with that particular channel. We're on that channel because we feel like we have to be on that channel or yeah. we're, trying, we're on that channel because that's quote unquote, that's where our customers are. That's not a good reason. Be, you know, in, in other words, it's because your customers are there doesn't necessarily mean you need to be there. It might mean you need to advertise there. It might need that you need to post some, you know, ways to pull them out of there. But it doesn't necessarily mean that's where you want to build your community. And we want to think a little more flame and attracting the moths rather than sort of trying to go to all the candles, right? And, and so it's the idea that you have to have a goal or objective. And what I would encourage you to do is to think of those goals and objectives. I always think of social media like a river. It's never the same place twice. And so if you're trying to pull in an audience to flow somewhere, where do you want that audience to flow? Is it to your email newsletter? Is it to your website? Is it to your e-commerce channel? Is it to, and, and start to, you know, is it to your customer help section? Um, and having a goal or objective for each of those, and then prioritizing them based on those goals and objectives. Where does it hurt the most at the moment? And then rebuilding your story on those things becomes a lot easier because that then is just about cadence and, and the kind of content that you're posting there. Yep. No, I think the, the, but the point is, from what you're saying, you can be on a platform, but you don't have to have a content creation strategy Correct. on that platform. You could just set it up as a listening post. Sure. Which That's we exactly right. your audience is there. It's like, say That's your right. audience is on threads. That's like, right. Okay. You can be there. You don't have to be posting anything. You That's could right. Just be there to comment on customers or be a part of their community or whatever, whatever the goal is to your point. I guess that's the best advice is what channel do you have? What is your ultimate goal with what you're trying to do there? And then how are you going to execute on that goal? Yeah. If you don't have a goal for a certain channel, that's probably a pretty good indication indicator that you. Right. Just and stop. so, and so go get your namespace, you know, go get your namespace on every new channel that comes out. Yeah. Um, that's part of our jobs as marketers is to go get our namespace, but it doesn't necessarily mean you have to, and you know, like jump in the pool head first, right. You know, to build a strategy, build your business strategy around that and look at those social media outlets as outlets. They are literally just content platforms by which you want to flow audiences into your sphere of influence, whatever that sphere mm -hmm. of influence is, your newsletter, your e-commerce, your website, your print magazine, your event, whatever those things are, they become that be, they, be, they become just little, you know, little streams that come through and that's your goal with the content that you're trying to put out there. Why don't we play the next question? Because yeah, this absolutely. Yeah, right in from this one. Yeah, here's, here's oh, awesome. Yeah. Question. yeah. Yeah. Hey, guys, this is Brittany Gardner. And I have a question about something that was said, I think, in passing on a recent episode. It was said that you should not start a podcast until after you've built an audience. And for what it's worth, I agree, podcasting is not going to build an audience for you. But this feels very much like something that a listener might procrastinate over. So is that really what you meant? Don't start a video channel or a podcast or anything like that until after you've built an audience? Or is it more something that could be done in conjunction with as a situation? Curious on your thoughts. Uh, you I made love this, this question. Comment. Yeah, you made this, this comment question. last time. So why don't yeah. you start first about your... Did I make Your this? Position. Did I did I talk? Yeah. Was it me? You, is it my that, fault? This was this is, was yours. This okay. Was, this was yours. So okay. Go ahead. Um, so Brittany, first of all, thank you very very much for the question. I love this question. Um, so if 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 I'm about to conflict with what I said before, my apologies. I I may have misspoke. But what I what I mean to say when I say starting a podcast uh, and building an audience is that it's easier. It's just infinitely easier to build your podcast audience. And this, by the way, this is true 
for any platform really, but podcasting in particular, where podcasting is sort of a, it's not an owned media platform, right? We are still dealing with, you know, we think of podcasting as an owned media audience, but it's really not because we don't know who the people are. We, they're not addressable. They're, they're, you know, we are still dependent on the algorithm uh, to get uh, our content in front of our audience. And so it's starting with a podcast, it's just infinitely harder, not necessarily, you know, you may go viral, you may have a wonderful podcast that gets an incredible amount of engagement right away, and builds quite the following. But then your job is to then get those podcast listeners to become email subscribers or get those. Um, and and that if that's your goal, right, and I get comes back to the goals and objectives, of course. Um, but if you have an email newsletter list, or if you have uh, a you know a, a database of of your audience, or if you know if you have an existing audience already, it's just easier to get a podcast to that critical, that minimum viable uh, capability to serve whatever goal or objective you may have. It's so it's not necessarily a binary. You should do this or you should do that. It's it's just easier. I, I find to to to. Uh, from, you know, from all of, you know, so in other words, when I have seen companies do this, when they've launched a podcast after they had their email or community built, it was, they, they had instant audience, they had instant audience, and it was just a different kind of experience. And then when I've seen them launch a podcast as the first thing that they're doing, I've just seen them struggle with trying to turn that into other levels of audience. So it's just an easier transition, I think. It's it's discovery so much more difficult yeah. with just a podcast. That's, That's right. That's really what it comes down to. I mean, when you say algorithm, there's not really much of an algorithm out there because you're not going to some podcast search mechanism and saying, what's a great marketing podcast or whatever well, that's a, that's a fair point. Yeah, that's you're a fair just point. Not gonna, now, yeah. maybe you'll hit it big on YouTube, which seems to be really good for findability of podcasts or better. Right. But there's, you know, you're not going to Spotify necessarily or or Stitcher or these other platforms and searching for, you know, oh, I'm going to search for this kind of podcast. You list, you find out in other ways. So if you're going to go heavy into podcasting first, you have to focus on marketing in that platform in audio itself. So I always say, if you have a newsletter, you should be marketing in other newsletters. If you have a podcast, you need to be marketing another podcast. So that means get on as many podcasts as you can as a, as a guest or figure out some partnership barter programs on other podcasts that your audience or pot potential audience might be hanging out and do some deals that way or pay something to get that out there. It's much more difficult. And that's where, where I think you and I have seen that where somebody will start a podcast. They're very excited and they say, oh, man, I've only got 50 downloads this week or right. 75. I'm like. Yeah, I mean, you could you could do the long haul and keep working it up and word of mouth and whatever, but it is really, really difficult. To your point, we started this podcast and we had the Content Marketing Institute um, community behind it and email. And they said, hey, yeah. Joe and Robert's got That's a right. podcast and we instantaneously did pretty well. That's right. Uh, because they're like, OK, what are these two chuckleheads talking about? And then That's we, right. We kept some of those people. So, yeah, I, I would just say, but if. If a podcast is your platform and that's where, you know, you, it's like the sorting hat in Harry Potter, you have a choice about where you want to start your platform. It, <laughs> if, if podcasting is it, you can do that, but know that uh, you've got a whole different set of marketing problems Harry when you go Potter. forward in that area. Harry you know, like Potter. That? I know it was a good one. It, it's 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 a good metaphor. Well, it's I like. Metaphor. I mean, a lot of people say, well, "Where should I start?" I mean, should I start where my audience is at? Like you said before, I mean, no, you're not necessarily a good one. Like, like if you have a talent or a passion for something, yeah, then use that. If it's YouTube or if it's LinkedIn or if it's a podcast, great, go ahead and do that. You do have a choice in the matter. Uh, but that's right, yeah, that's and that's not to discourage okay. anybody from starting a podcast. I, I but one of the things I want to make sure, Brittany, is that you're not. Uh, you're not taking my comments as a discouragement to start a podcast because it, it, regardless if you've got a good business goal or if you've got a good personal goal or you just you just want to start a podcast please go do that d enjoy have fun all i want to say is is that it's easier if you've got an existing audience yeah. did yeah. you know that stat that we talked about it on this i think it's more than half of all podcasts uh have less than three, than three episodes. episodes yeah yeah it's it's so incredible people people get very excited about starting things yeah and, <laughs> and then they don't not so committal yeah. uh, that's no. right 
So yeah, that's yeah. that's that's exactly it. Which has basically put a a bit of a kibosh on people wanting to subscribe, right? There's the whole there is an, a level of audience frustration that exists today with, uh, and this is a, by the way this is this this applies to Netflix as well as other streaming shows too. There is there is a documented and well researched trend that people are not as willing to give new shows a uh, a chance because of how capricious these streaming networks are with how many episodes that they do, right? You know, so, so many of them will cancel after the first season or leave you hanging after the first season with no season two, and it leaves on a giant cliffhanger, and you're like, uh, how, you know, so th it has really put a real damper on people's willingness to give new shows a chance. So it's, true. it's a, it's a challenge in podcasting, I, I, too. I haven't added a new episode or a new podcast to my regular listening for a long time. Oh, I have. I, I add them all the time. Well, see, you're, you're, yeah, you're better, but I did, you're but I jettisoned them all the time. Thank you yeah. for throwing me under the bus that's, there. That's you right. are a better yeah. person no. than me. Well, that much has been established <laughs> for many years, my friend. Yeah, as I'm saying, everybody years. knows this. That's right. All right. Uh, now we get to our rants and raves uh, section here where Joe and I go off on a little bit of a rant or a little bit of a rave. Before we do that, actually get over to our site, won't you? Thisoldmarketing.com. We've got all sorts of wonderful goodness over there for you, including, by the way, there you go, Brittany, um, our uh, email uh, subscribers where you can actually subscribe to either Joe's Tilt newsletter, which is always a wonderful thing to get into your inbox, or our little experience advisors newsletter as well, which is if you're in the business of creating experiences or content for clients or your own boss, then uh, here's the wonderful newsletter for you. We also bookmark, obviously, all of the show notes that we've got, the links that we've got. So if you wanted to read about any of these articles that we've talked about today, those are there. And it's where you can leave us a voicemail or a wonderful uh, message, just like Brittany or Linda did. And so thank you for all of those. We love all of that stuff. We love show ideas. We love the questions, all those sorts of stuff. Get on over there, thisoldmarketing.com. Okay. Now, uh, do you want to go first? You're talking oh, about yeah. Macon. You uh, can real, go really real quickly. Quick. Yeah. Uh, real quick. Uh, I'm, I'm at uh, the Marketing AI event from the Marketing AI Institute, Macon, uh, this week. Uh, I... I know for sure that the numbers are going to be at least triple the amount of people that were last that were there last year. I'm just so proud of the team, Paul Reitzer, Kathy McPhillips, uh, the entire team uh, working over at uh, Marketing AI Institute because Paul, you know, Paul Reitzer had a very successful agency. Uh, PR 2020 was the first HubSpot yeah. partner agency, actually and really believed that the next big conversation in marketing would be around AI and believed this a long time before any of us saw this opportunity and said, I'm going to sell my agency and I'm really going to go 100% into marketing AI and created the Institute and started it very similar to a lot of the things we've been talking about on the show. Started with a blog, started with an email newsletter, and then expanded into a very popular uh, podcast uh, that they've been doing for quite a while. And then the event, Maycon, which I think, you know, COVID aside, I think they're in their third or fourth in-person yeah. year of doing this. Yeah. And just to see it go from, hey, it's not quite there. It's not quite there. And you, it's familiar to us, I think, because you and I struggled in 08 and 09 and 10 and getting people on the content marketing train. And then in 11, it just, everything took off. We're like, oh, it finally get. And I feel it's very similar it happened with AI, and of course, uh, the launch of ChatGPT in uh, in November of last year made a big difference in Paul's business, and I'm so happy for them that they're really making it. And I, I just see this as the turning point of their whole business model taking off. And they're talking with amazing companies from all over the world, trying to help them figure out. A lot of those people will be talking about their case studies at the event. So I just wanted to throw kudos out to them for another successful event, another successful business model for Paul. And, um, you know, having the guts to to make the jump before people really believe that this was going to be a thing. So there you go. He's, it's an amazing thing he's done. It's truly an amazing thing. I, you know, it's it's one of those there. There are times in your life when you look at people and you go, you, you know, you sort of end up having one of two reactions. Right. You go, I could have done that. And then but then you go, but you didn't. You know what I mean? And then there's, and then there's the man, just when good people win, it's just, 
you know, when, when you see that happen because they stuck to their beliefs and really went all in on a thing. And it's just, you know, when good, you know, you see good and bad people end up winning in those situations. And, and Paul is just one of the good guys. So it's really great to see him and the entire team there because the entire team has come together, honestly, to, to build what it is right now. And so it's it's not just Paul, but it but uh, it's in, in and, large and, part led him. Mike Caput over yeah. there has done a great job as their chief oh, content yeah. officer. I um, mean, the, the entire they're just lovely people over yeah. there. But at the same time, or even before Paul and team launched that business model, there were a lot of people doing like, "Hey, we're going to cover AI on the podcast." Sure, of course, yeah, they we're going to yeah. do this little thing, but nobody committed to it all in like yeah. Paul did. And, yeah. and I think that's where the difference where if you, I mean, you, you type in anything on marketing AI and, and they come up and yeah. they work really hard at getting that spot. It's, it's been, it's been amazing. And, you know, by the way, much to the chagrin of me, cause I was, you know, one of the first things when we, when we talked when he and I talked about it a long time ago, I went marketing AI. Ah, I think that might be too niche. I think you may want to just go AI. And he was like, no, I think it's just marketing. I'm like, all right, you know. And another but, example of there's another no exam- such thing is too yeah, niche. That's right. There, and then a I great example. No, yeah, a no great example. Thing. Another, also another example of where I'm just so wrong. I'm just so wrong about it. Things. Well, yeah. I mean, how many hours of audio could we fill up with the amount of times that you and I were wrong? A lot. Um, yeah. A lot. But it's, uh, this but is that's why really we need the show. That's really what this show is. Yeah. It's, a, yeah. it's a show of horrible and tedious marketing. Today. It's a little bit like the George Costanza thing, right? Where it's just like you do the opposite. You do the opposite of what <laughs> what it is we we do, and you'll be fine in life. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, very very quickly here. Uh, this um, there's a news item that came out this week from Axios, uh, and basically said that Vox Media, which of course is a big media company, will be dropping their own content management system, and that's fine. That news is, is, you know, whatever it's going to be. Basically, they're saying that um, Vox Media, they have, you know, New York Magazine, they've got SB Nation, they've got, you know, a number of titles. They had their own custom proprietary content management system called Chorus. uh, And basically, it powered all of their websites. And that's not uncommon that you have media companies who built content management systems. And the reason for that, and I know this because I came out of this industry for so long, um, is because most of the content management systems that were invented in the early 2000s, big enterprise content management systems, um, all sprung from a company. It was sort of like the 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 you know patient zero, if you will, was a company called Vignette, and it was built around building websites for media companies. And CNET was there, you know, was where it really originated. And but then it very quickly the market went to helping product and service brands manage their content. So you had, you know, all these big enterprise, everybody from Microsoft to Oracle to Hewlett Packard back in the day to um, independent companies like Interwoven and, you know, and my little company that that, that I was part of the founding of, um, we were all in this enterprise web content management space and it all went to corporate. And they really weren't good for media companies. They weren't good for that collaborative workflow. They weren't good for editorial. They weren't good for, you know, they just weren't fast enough, nor were they sort of built to be around news and editorial. They were built to be around static pages and about us and press releases and product pages and all those kinds of things. And so the market's really divided. And so you had media companies really building their own stuff. And so interestingly, what's happened then sort of in the latter, you know, 2010s, 2015, et cetera, is you had a lot of these media companies go, huh, well, we're good at this, right? We're good at this content management thing. And so we'll build a business unit that is basically going to use our content management system and sell it. And the Washington Post has done this uh, before. Um, the Vox uh, was actually doing it. Um, Gawker was doing it when it licensed its tech platform called Kinja to other media companies. Um, Washington Post, like I mentioned, and others really started to think of this as a new business that they could get into, which was enterprise content management. And probably most notably, although weirdly not very known in the even in the marketing and, and MarTech stack, is Washington Post had a lot of success with this. They had a lot of success with licensing out their CMS to brands that wanted to manage their websites using this. And so what we see here is all of them are starting to divest themselves of this idea of trying to figure out. And what it reminds me of so much, and we've been doing a lot of work in the last 
uh, six months in looking at media companies and content studios as well. So the T-Brand studios, sort of the custom content consulting and agency studios. And what they're finding out is what product companies have figured out for a long time, that services is hard and it's a very tough thing to do. And media companies, now that they're getting into the software and the services business are discovering, those business models are very different and hard as well. And so it's an interesting thing to me that in many cases, both with content studios and the software business, that they're deciding these days, instead of evolving that business model or spinning it out or trying to figure it out, just divesting them, so just going. You know what? This is too much trouble and not enough, uh, not enough, uh, not enough benefit. That's a fascinating trend to me. I think it's wrong, by the way. Um, I think there are ways to make this work, um, both on the content studio media company as agency, basically, as well as media company as software provider. And I think it does feed into what we've talked about at all. You know, diversifying revenue streams, becoming a platform company, all those things. You just have to really kind of put the care and feeding into the product development and into the business model, very much like what Amazon did with you know with uh, with with their uh, you know Amazon you know web services and became a software enterprise company in, in in the process and have also done with Amazon Prime becoming a media company. They've just understood that it's different business models, need mm-hmm. different skill sets, need different approaches, and they've been organizing it accordingly. So it's not that it can't be done. It's just it's difficult and hard. And I, I see news like this and I go, ah, I just wish they had I just wish they had taken the adventure to heart. It's interesting that when when you go that direction, you know you have to probably bring in different talent that's right as well it's tough yeah it's uh i was listening again back to the uh mr beast podcast uh where the the manager was talking about launching the feastables brand and how they had to bring in people that really understood retail yeah because it's moving from a media exactly. business model to to selling candy bars on the shelves of Walmart very different all over yep. the world is a very very different model and you need different people to do that and i think sometimes i mean when uh when I was at Penton Media and it was basically an advertising driven organization or an event driven organization. And they said, OK, we're going to do the services model and we're going to offer consulting, whatever. They started to bring this. Oh, we'll have the same salespeople that sell advertising and sell consulting. And you're like, oh, God, <laughs> that's that's yeah. cute. That's yeah. cute because it rarely happens. It's a totally different animal when you do that's that. That's right. A lot of people that's don't exa- realize that. That's exactly right. So. Anyways. All right. Well, well, what do you? So you're you're at Macon. You're I'm Macon. traveling to Toronto. Um, yeah, it's going to be a busy week for us both, I suppose. Over to, over to YYZ Airport. Over to YYZ, and then the nine and a half hour drive from YYZ to downtown Toronto, which it always seems oh like to get God, it's longer so, and longer. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's interesting. Even when you're flying internationally too, there's always so many great options out of Toronto, YYZ Airport, and. I'm and like, so no, few going in, yeah. No, yeah. yeah. It's like don't take it, don't take the bait. It's cheap and it looks right, but when you get there, you're gonna be there for two extra nights because something's gonna be canceled. <laughs> exactly, it always oh happens God. that way. That's so We've funny. All spent so much time in Toronto's airport. Yes, uh, uh, that is that is uh, another is that, the that you you had a couple of those this this I've episode. Had, oh, Jesus, fantastic. Just so so as much as I we have a lot of really good friends in Toronto, but. I can't say I'm big fans of the airport because you just surrender pronto think, or we'll level happen. Toronto. <laughs> Somebody can answer the movie that that comes from. I Not can. Canadian. You can. I can't. I don't know that one. Oh, you don't you want, surrender you pronto say? or we'll level Toronto. It's a, from a movie called Canadian bacon that came oh, out. Oh, shoot. The, John Candy. Right. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Funny, 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 funny. Okay. Movie, yeah. I remember that. It's one. Alan yeah. Alda that says that he's the president of the United States and they invade Canada. It's like, oh, surrender God. pronto or we'll level Toronto. For 30 yeah. years. It's good. Yeah. No, it's a long time ago. You you're really dating yourself now i am so. indeed all right all Good right deal. well thank you we won't date you any longer um this is uh we'll see you next week um on another episode of this old marketing and until we see you next week just remember in the meantime it's your story tell it well see you next week on this old marketing <laughs>